Welcome to County Durham, a very picturesque part of the northeast of England. Historically, this area has seen many significant changes which in turn have affected the spiritual development and growth of Baptist churches in Hamsterley and the surrounding towns and villages. And this film will help to create a picture of the life, witness and mission of Hamsterley Baptist Church throughout the last 360 years. As the Baptist Church at Hamsterley celebrates its 360th anniversary in 2012, it can look back with pride on the significant contribution it has made to Baptist life not only in Hamsterley but throughout the north of England. The origins of the church can be traced back to the formation of a Baptist church in Hexham in 1652 under the leadership of Thomas Tillam. Tillam, with the passion of an evangelist, he reached out beyond Hexham and he and those who succeeded him in the leadership of the Hexham church, they established Baptist congregations in several locations including Broomley, Muggleswick and Bitchburn, now known as Beechburn Farm, near Bishop Auckland. The church that met at Bitchburn under the leadership of Henry Blackett grew in numbers and influence and in addition played a significant role in the early years of the Northern Baptist Association. They met in one of the barns at the farm until in 1714 the church decided to erect a Baptist meeting house in Hamsterley and this was opened in 1715 and became the new location for the church. This was one of the first dissenting chapels built in the north of England and in the first 20 years of its existence it hosted the annual Northern Baptist Association Assembly meetings on 11 occasions. In 1741 the church became a significant centre of Christian witness under the leadership of Isaac Garner who pastored the church for 16 years until his death in 1758 at the age of 41 years. And the church was then blessed with two other pastors of great ability in subsequent years. Charles Whitfield served the church from 1771 to 1821 and David Douglas served the church from 1822 to 1849 and under their leadership, the church continued to prosper. Charles Whitfield was born in Weirdale in 1748, and when 13 years of age, he moved to Newcastle to begin an apprenticeship. At that time, John Wesley's Methodist movement was spreading throughout the Northeast, and Charles Whitfield joined the Methodist Society in Newcastle. John Wesley himself recognised Whitfield as a young man of great promise and he took a personal interest in his development as a local preacher and church leader by providing him with study facilities. However, Whitfield began to have some reservations uh, about the Wesleyan theology and in addition he became convinced about the biblical truth of believers' baptism. As a result, he left Methodism and became a member of the Baptist Church in Newcastle. He made frequent visits to the place of his early years in Weirdale and on several occasions preached at some of the Baptist churches in the vicinity. In 1771, the Hamsterley Church, which at that time was linked to the congregations at Rowley and Hindley, invited him to take pastoral oversight of these three congregations and on his acceptance he took up residence in Hamsterley. The church soon grew under his leadership and by 1774 
Attendances at the church ranged between 150 and 200 people each week. And it was about this time that the church was rebuilt with an adjoining manse. This is the church that I'm sitting in just now, and it is still being used for weekly worship. Whitfield was widely recognized as a Hebrew scholar, as well as a scholar in Latin and Greek. And an evidence of this is his inscribing the Hebrew word for Bethel, which means house of God, above the door of the newly rebuilt church. Due to the growth of the church, it was decided in 1785 that the Rowley Hindley congregations would separate from Hamsterley and appoint their own pastor. And so from then until his death, 36 years later, Whitfield devoted his time and energies to the church here at Hamsterley. But his concern, however, extended well beyond the village. In 1775, he published a book entitled The Form and Order of a Gospel Church. And he was being increasingly recognized nationally as a leader in biblical and theological scholarship. He was the driving force in the revival of the Northern Baptist Association. And in the last 25 years of his life, was recognized as the leading Baptist in the northeast of England, initiating many evangelistic endeavors and establishing several new Baptist churches throughout the region. Two years before his death in April 1819, while writing a sermon on Genesis chapter 19 verses 24 and 25, which says, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and on Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew these cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. During his preparation, Charles Whitfield was struck down with paralysis, which resulted him being unable to continue his pastoral and preaching work. He invited David Douglas, a young Scot from Edinburgh, who was a student at the recently formed Bradford Baptist Academy, to provide temporary ministry to the Hamsterley Church during his incapacity. Charles Whitfield died on the 18th of July, 1821, aged 73, and his passing was mourned throughout the whole Baptist denomination. The funeral service was attended by a great number of his congregation friends and neighbours who were almost universally bathed in tears. The Reverend Richard Pengilly of Newcastle preached his funeral sermon from 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He also delivered the oration at the grave, assisted by Mr. Stillman of Swaledale and the Reverend Harbottle of Tottlebank. Charles Whitfield was interred in the burying ground adjoining the chapel here, and the Hamsterley congregation erected a headstone in the graveyard to honour his memory. Following Whitfield's death, David Douglas accepted the invitation to become the pastor of the church, and he served the church for 27 years until his death in 1849. He was a worthy successor to Charles Whitfield, both in his ministry at Hamsterley and his active interest in the well-being of all the Baptist churches in the Northern Association. During his ministry, the church established three new congregations in Teesdale 
at Middleton, Egglesburn and Eggleston, and a fourth in Bruff in Westmoreland. It is perhaps worth recording that David Douglas experienced considerable personal sorrow during his years at Hamsterley. His wife died in 1822 after only seven months of marriage. And in 1841, his second wife died aged 41 years. Four of his children died in their youth at Hamsterley, including his eldest son, who was almost blind and whose death occurred when he was 14 years of age. Yet despite all these things, he exercised a faithful and fruitful ministry and as with his predecessor, his death was widely mourned. However, he left a church that was strong and active in Christian work and witness. And some indication of this can be seen in the 1851 census, which reveals that in the village of Hamsterley on 30th of March that year, 138 persons attended the Baptist church, 55 the Methodist church, and 53 the parish church. It could be said that by the middle of the 19th century, the glory days of Hamsterley had come to an end. Growing towns were coming into existence throughout the region due to the vast expansion of the coal mining industry and the leadership of the association passed from Hamsterley to the larger churches that had been established in these new towns. In the 1850s, the church entered into a joint pastorate with the Wolsingham Church but this was short-lived and unfruitful and was eventually discontinued. In 1869, the Reverend J.P. Beale became the pastor at Hamsterley and during his pastorate, the church experienced renewal. There were, however, two factors that militated against the church seeing great numerical growth. First, New Baptist churches were being planted in neighbouring growing towns such as Bishop Auckland, Witten Part and Crook and some of the members of Hamsterley transferred their membership to these new causes to help these new churches become established. And secondly, since the village of Hamsterley was outside the area of the exposed Durham coalfield, it meant that the village did not see any large growth in population due to mining operations such as was seen in other places. In the period from 1904 onwards, the church entered into several joint pastorate schemes with other nearby churches, and although this meant that regular services could be maintained, the church was never to see the numerical growth that had characterised it a century before. Throughout most of the 20th century, simply maintaining the services and activities occupied the energies of the members. And by 1970, things had deteriorated to such an extent that the church's worship service was held on only one Sunday each month. In 1972, Mr. Angus Pearson, a member of the Rowley Church, began to serve the church as lay pastor and secretary, a service that he continued for over 20 years. In 1987, the Department of the Environment listed the church and the manse as buildings of architectural and historic importance by giving it a grade two star listing, and this placed on the members the responsibility for maintaining the fabric in good condition. Some restoration work took place in the following years, and this secured the use of the premises for future generations. By the beginning of the 21st century, once again services began to be held regularly, 
with weekly Bible studies, mainly due to the assistance of interim pastors from the United States of America. In 2010, a new era in the life of the church began as new people moved into the area and also with the appointment of the Reverend Ray Richardson as the pastor moderator. The church now holds Bible studies every Thursday evening and worship services on the second, fourth and fifth Sundays when some of the members of the other Baptist churches in the Mid-Durham group, that is from Crook and Bishop Auckland, they join together at Hamsterley. The church also has firm links with the Methodist and Anglican congregations in the village and hold joint meetings on a regular basis. God willing, this means that there may be a future for evangelical service, witness and mission at Hamsterley Baptist Church for the next 360 years.